Hey drone gang, this is one of my favorite episodes. She's a real banger. I have three great cinematography tips for you so you can take super creative self-portraits with your drone. All right, so let's start this exciting new episode of Anatomy of a Drone Shot. So I'm getting into position here for our first drone self-portrait session. And after the shoot, we cover a very important technique called frame grabs. Then I'll walk you through all my editing tricks, my composition tips, and two more super fun drone self-portrait sessions that are truly creative. I think you'll definitely be inspired. Oh man, that was so much fun. So there's one last shot that I took. It was on my list. It was a downward 45 degree angle shot. I like the idea. I think I like the composition, but I messed around with color grading a bit and I just can't get the shot to work. So I skipped it. Before we look at the editing, I wanna mention I'm not taking photographs in photo mode. I'm doing what's called frame grabs from a video. So I record in 4K. Then, in editing, I scrub through the footage and I find exact images I like and I use that frame as the starting point for my editing. Video is just a series of photographs. So when you do this frame grab technique for self-portraits, the trick is to pose for a few seconds in different poses. That way, your body has no movement for a few seconds, so it'll be tack sharp in the majority of those frames. When you do this frame grab technique for photographs, I suggest 60 frames a second because it's recording 60 photographs or frames every second. So if you pose for three seconds in every pose, that's 180 frames to choose from per pose. Most of them will be tack sharp, so lots of images for you to choose from. So if you wanna hit the shutter button in photo mode with the controller in your hand, you can certainly do that. But you only have one photo to choose from per shutter release. But if you wanna not be holding the controller in your hand for a self-portrait, then you do this frame grab technique. Haha, -ha. so here we are at the spiritual home of any self-respecting gypsy the railroad tracks. <laughs> so I completed my pre-shoot uh, worksheet and I had a bunch of details in it. I knew I wanted to do the railroad tracks because it kind of speaks to my nomadic filmmaker fancy <laughs> I have about myself. And I had a few other details that I came up with. 
this leather jacket, um, sunglasses, this hat. Um, I've got a mug of coffee there too. And I'm gonna have my, uh, my video camera in the shot as well. So um, all that kind of paints a picture of this kind of cool gypsy um, video guy. So um, I've got two shots that I know I wanna capture. One of them's gonna be um, kind of over the shoulder, 45 degree, I'm kind of looking over my shoulder up at the drone with my coffee and my camera here. And then the other shot I want to do is a, a top down, looking straight down um, at me. Um, other than that, I can't, I, I'm just going to do a little trial and error and see if any composition really pops out at me. So the sun is kind of peeking out behind the clouds there. So I'm going to do a little trial and error with that. All right, let's go. Oh, get to work. So this is pretty rad right here. Watch how I position the drone so it's facing the sun and I put it right in the path of those sun rays peeking out from behind the trees. So it randomly kicks off these sun flares. That's why it has this washed out flat look before color grading. Now, pick up the coffee, playboy. That's what's written on the sheet. Now, look over your left shoulder like we talked about. Smile. You nailed it, kid. That's the exact image I had in my head when I was at my desk writing my little pre-shoot outline. I got this shot in two minutes. If I didn't pre-plan and I was just flying around randomly doing trial and error, I could have spent three or four batteries and not gotten a good shot. Planning is everything. And a badass leather jacket helps. With posed shots, you know you're gonna get some fire insta bangers, but keep an eye out for strong candid shots also. Damn, I love this image. My clothing, the coffee mug, my camera rig, the train tracks, everything is exactly how I envisioned it in my pre-shoot outline. But the candid expression I found when scrubbing through the footage, that was the final ingredient that makes this a favorite image. Ha, <laughs> just kidding. Ah, maybe one day. Oh, this will be a cool shot. Watch this. Ha! <laughs> Wait. Oh! <laughs> So this is a special moment for me. I love my dad. So we talked about a few ideas and decided to stand on the end of this pier. That would be a great setting for us with the sunrise behind us. <laughs> this is the first camera angle we wanted to try with the drone way out over the water. Nailed it. We are super proud of that shot. 
The other angle we plan on capturing is this classic symmetrical center frame composition. There is no one in the world I respect more than my dad. He is the man. Thank you for 50 years of love and respect, good sir. My settings are the same for every shot in this episode, and pretty much for every flight, actually. I love the look of 60 frames a second. You saw a lot of slow motion drone footage in this episode. So I normally shoot in 24 frames a second, not 30. And when I'm filming a scene and it looks really good, I'll capture it in 24 frames a second, then switch to 60 and film it again. So that I have that scene in both frame rates saved. I think that's a very underrated editing skill. The ability to crop out elements of a scene that distract from the subject is enormously important. When you strategically, intentionally crop like that, you're improving the composition. That's why I call it a very underrated editing skill. Cropping improves composition when done right. My drone footage, I crop heavily and frequently. Now, let's talk color grading. I do all my photo and editing in LumaFusion, and I never do any heavy footage manipulation, just slight adjustments. So I'm gonna edit this shot. It's a good example here because it's a little flat looking, despite having perfect exposure when filmed and shot during golden hour, it's still pretty flat looking. Let's contrast it with this clip shot just two minutes apart, same setting, same everything. You can see what a massive difference there is when the drone is facing towards the sun versus away from the sun. I'm gonna make this big sweeping generalization right here. Your drone's orientation toward or away from the sun has the single biggest impact on color, saturation, contrast, and character of your footage. No magic editing trickery, no filters, no LUTs can replicate what the orientation of the sun can do. The very first thing I do when I have a scene to shoot is position my drone so that my sun orientation is where I want it. Then I make little adjustments to the drone to the composition where I want it. Now, <laughs> let's edit this clip. So here's the four color adjustments that I make, generally speaking. So let's start with the gamma. And I generally just start to lower it till it feels about right. So that the darks aren't too dark. There's still some detail in the shadow, but I like that look a little bit more. Then I will adjust the saturation to just to see what looks right. You never wanna to go too much with the saturation in that direction. I generally like to desaturate just a little bit and see what that looks like. Then I'll add a little bit of warmth, increasing the red tones and decreasing the blue tones a little bit. And then lastly, I'll just play around with the contrast just a little bit. So you can see it brightens the skies and darkens the mid-tones a little bit. See, I think that looks pretty good. So I would be happy with that. And then the other thing I'll do, I love black and white. So then what I do is uh, I'll make another copy of this. So what I mean is I'll keep that copy, then I'll duplicate it. And now I'm gonna manipulate this copy to see if there's anything that I like. So for example, I'll desaturate, not fully, but about 70, 80, 90%. This is a little hint of color. And then I'll play around with this and see if I can get a nice black and white image that, I, that I'm happy with. I kind of like that. So now I've got two copies. I've got a, a color copy there, and then I've got my black and white. So that's generally just how I do very quick color grading. 
Now, I added two effects to the photos in this episode. This vintage digital frame and a vintage film stock overlay. I put a link down in the description to these effects and a few others if you want to use them in your videos. You can download the video from YouTube or what I do is simply screen record. Then when you drop one of these effects onto your footage, you simply decrease the opacity so you can see the footage beneath it. Then you adjust it to your liking. So even if you aren't a selfie type person, you can still capture beautiful self-portraits with your drone that would be impossible with a traditional boring land camera. The possibilities for creativity are endless, but the paradox of choice is real. So to thwart that, use this little outline I have down in the description. It's designed to help you narrow down the scene choices, the camera angles, the styling choices, so you can craft a self-portrait that's authentic and reflects your personality. You're still watching. <laughs> I'm slack-jawed. <laughs> Thank you. Well, if you want to see a great episode where I was not feeling creative or inspired, but I pushed myself to go out into the outdoors, enjoy the sunshine, and just put my drone up in the sky. And I actually got some content that didn't suck. <laughs> so this episode right here, it's all about working through times when you're not inspired or creative and you need a little boost. So click there to check it out. I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for watching. <laughs>